you enabled this fake account scam, you got rich off it, and then you tried to cover it up. At best, you were incompetent. At worst, you were complicit. And either way, you should be fired. That's Elizabeth Warren, a U.S. senator, a CEO's worst nightmare, and a 2020 Democratic presidential hopeful who has a very real chance of becoming the nation's first ever female president. You would be the oldest president ever inaugurated. I'd also be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. <laughs> She's playing a major role in advancing a progressive leftist agenda in American politics, but she wasn't always. Years before she became a politician, she was a registered Republican. By now you're probably wondering, who's telling me all this and why? I'm comedian Julia Shiplett, and this is a story of Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Ann Warren grew up, as she likes to say, on the ragged edge of the middle class. She was born in 1949 in Norman, Oklahoma. According to Politico, Katrina Harry, one of Warren's best friends in high school, distinctly remembers Warren being an ice-cold Republican, as she would sometimes tease her. Warren joked back that Harry had socialist friends. Warren got a debate scholarship to George Washington University. She dropped out to marry her high school sweetheart. They initially moved to Houston, where Warren finished her undergraduate studies. The couple then moved to New Jersey. She became pregnant and had their first child. Then she enrolled in Rutgers Law. Warren had her second child shortly before graduating with her law degree. I took to law school like a pig takes mm. to mud. Mm. I mean, this mm. was fabulous. Mm. I loved mm -hmm. law school. In the next few years, Warren passed the bar, got divorced and remarried to her current husband, worked on real estate closings, and raised her two kids. And then an important call came in. Rutgers called and said somebody didn't show up to teach a class. Mm. Would you like to come and teach it? As a professor in the 80s, she was traveling around the country with a photocopier, working on a big study examining bankruptcy, who files for it and why it happens. She set out to prove that people were robbing the system. I set out to prove they were all a bunch of cheaters. Mm -hmm. um, my, my take on this, my, mm -hmm. my thrust, what I was gonna do is I was gonna expose these people who were taking advantage of the rest of us by hauling off to bankruptcy and discharging debts that they really could repay. But she found just the opposite, that abuse of bankruptcy was rare and people filing for it were actually in financial distress. This important finding led her to do what hardly any other politician or person really ever does, change her mind. In 1992, she became a law professor at Harvard and later got a call from Washington. One of her old high school debate buddies was hired by the Clinton administration to study the country's bankruptcy laws, and he decided to call Harvard professor Elizabeth Warren. She said, we hadn't seen each other in the intervening decades, but 14-year-old boys seemed to remember 15-year-old girls who once beat them in debate tournament play. Warren, who was brought on to make changes to the bankruptcy bill, quickly became cynical with the political landscape and switched parties in 1996. It's unclear why her party's handling of the 1980s AIDS crisis or the racist Southern strategy wasn't enough for her to jump ship. But nevertheless, bankruptcy law was. As a Democrat, Warren was called on by Washington again. During the 2008 financial crisis, she was asked to lead a congressional oversight panel, which was convened to review the current state of financial markets and the regulatory system. Two weeks ago, I became the chair of the congressional oversight panel established to check out how $700 billion of your money is spent in Washington. Because the committee had very little power, Warren decided to try and win over the court of public opinion. So she frequently popped up on TV and made her case. Right. So what we're really watching here is a David and Goliath story. She went to bat for the American people against both the Bush and Obama administrations, questioning them about why the government was more interested in bailing out the banks than helping homeowners facing foreclosure. Her work on the panel led to the creation of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is a U.S. government agency tasked with ensuring financial products and services work for, and not prey on, the American people. Warren won a Senate seat in 2012, representing Massachusetts, where she's doggedly fought for the American people ever since. This is about responsibility. Have you returned one nickel of the millions of dollars that you were paid while this scam was going on? The, the board will take care Have of that. Have you returned one nickel of the money you earned while this scam was going on? And, and the board will do I will that. take that as a no then. Warren has been one of the loudest voices in the Senate holding the rich accountable. 
but she has also done some things in her past that many are critical of. For example, in 1986, Warren claimed she was American Indian when she filled out paperwork for the State Bar of Texas. In 2019, Warren released DNA results showing she had a Native American ancestor six to ten generations ago. Critics argue the distant ancestors make her unable to claim the identity. Warren apologized. And in 2017, she voted to raise the defense budget to $700 billion, far surpassing the $54 billion increase requested by Trump. She championed Israel's war on Gaza and supported sanctions against Venezuela. But all in all, she's largely seen as one of the most progressive U.S. senators America has ever seen. On February 9, 2019, Warren formally announced her bid for the presidency. Throughout the debates, Warren was frequently seen side by side with Senator Bernie Sanders as they both bashed private insurance companies and the rich and sometimes Joe Biden. The two candidates are often compared to one another, and of course they overlap, but denying that there are differences between them is inaccurate. When Donald Trump at the State of the Union said that America would never be a socialist country, Warren stood up and applauded. At first, Warren adopted the Vermont Senator's Medicare for All bill. I'm with Bernie on Medicare for All. But she later pivoted to breaking his bill into two parts. The first part is passing legislation to offer new Medicare benefits while maintaining private insurance companies. The second part is proposing legislation to end existing employer plans by her third year in office, similar to plans put forward by Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg. Proponents of her more moderate health care plan call it realistic, citing all the roadblocks up against ambitious bills already in Congress. Opponents argue that achieving Medicare for all over the course of two bills is dangerous because it makes the legislation potentially more vulnerable to not passing. And they claim by kicking the program off with an immediate compromise, it leaves her no wiggle room to complete the full transition to Medicare for All. Warren calls her proposal a long-term plan, which, according to left-wing political analyst Ben Studebaker, is code to rich people for, this is all pretend. But much like Senator Sanders, Warren hasn't taken a dime of big money during the 2020 presidential primaries. However, she's transferred at least $10.4 million from past fundraisers with millionaires and billionaires to her 2020 presidential primary run. And the guy who knows more about taking big money than anyone else called her out. Senator, your presidential campaign right now, as we speak, is funded in part by money you transferred, having raised it at those exact same big ticket fundraisers you now denounce. Warren's recent shift of shooing big money away during the primaries has critics fearful that this is just a strategic move and not a deeply held belief. They argue she's trying to keep up with Bernie Sanders and appease the immense democratic socialist shift in the party before taking big money again in the general to compete with Trump. In fact, Warren confirmed this fear. Does this only apply in the primaries or will you carry this over to the general election or any other election you'll have going forward? So this is for primaries. Look. I do not believe in unilateral disarmament. We need to win. It's a fair argument, doing whatever it takes to win. After all, isn't that politics? The flip side, however, raises the question, is winning elected office at all costs worth the countless political favors one will have to fulfill during their term? For Warren, at least in the primaries, the answer is no. I decided I was not gonna spend my time behind closed doors with bazillionaires and corporate executives. It's unclear what an ever-evolving Elizabeth Warren would look like in the general election. But if she gets the chance, this one-time Harvard professor with tons of government experience and a finger on the pulse of the political landscape might just be a former steak salesman. Hey, thanks for watching Who Is? Did you know we have a podcast now too? On Who Is, the podcast, I'll dive deep into the fascinating lives of the people who run things, whose decisions impact every aspect of our lives. How did they get where they are today? And knowing that, what might they do next? From politicians to the ultra rich, to military contractors and monarchs and media moguls, I'll introduce you to the reporters and experts who know these real life world molders best sharp-eyed observers and confidants who observe our subjects as they make the decisions that define our everyday lives. To see more, hit the link or search Who Is on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more of the video series you know and love, be sure to check out the Snapchat versions and our series playlists on YouTube and Facebook.